Hi, my name is Indigo. You can call me Refined Divine Slime. Um, still working on the AKAs, but I wanted to make this video because I just had a realization as I was listening to Malcolm X. It's a a TV series from back in the day called The Hate uh, That Bre er, the hate that bred hate, I'm going to link it in the description, I can't remember, but it was a very propagandic framing and title of what Malcolm X and uh, Elijah Muhammad was saying. But I kind of caught on to what the white interviewers were trying to imply in the insidiousness of their message versus the truth, whether or not it was presented imperfectly, that was present in Malcolm X and... Um, Elijah Muhammad's message, which is this. So let's just take it back to slavery. So black people were slaves in the US, then they get freed. And it is logical to think, hmm, if you just got enslaved by a bunch of white people, why would you want to live life with them? Why would you want to share space with them? If you are trying to recover your trauma from slavery, wouldn't you need some fucking space to do so? For example, if you were in an abusive relationship where you were treated like a servant and physically, sexually, emotionally, and spiritually abused by that person, and they said, okay, you're free now, but still live with me in my house, wouldn't that be strange? If you were truly free, wouldn't they let you go about your business and leave you the hell alone? That's kind of the question I have for white liberals. So why is it that Integration is such a big thing. And when I say I'm a separatist, I get weird looks. Before I even got super deep into Malcolm X or studied him at length, which honestly at this point, I've only listened to probably less than 10, 15 hours of Malcolm X in my entire life. I haven't listened to a ton of Malcolm X, but from the little bit I've learned, I mean, I kind of intuitively understood separatism before even being introduced to him because I noticed Whenever I went to a white neighborhood as a child, I felt uncomfortable, people stared at me. I've even been an adult and been offended by white children giving me the death stare just because I'm trying to shop for groceries. And I'm like, okay, sure, there's some good white people and there's some nice ones, but does that mean I want to deal with all white people? No, I don't want to go to the grocery store and get a death stare from a two-year-old because I have melanin. Like. What happened to the sentiment that black people were allowed to have space to heal? But I feel like that's not even a narrative besides in this trope, safe spaces, which so often get infiltrated by white liberals claiming to be allies, but not actually have done the work needed to step up to the plate and, you know, be truly supportive in every way. So I, I do want to scratch your guys's brains a little bit about that where it's like hmm yeah why was it what was the government's intention in freeing African Americans and then immediately integrating them like first is free them then it's all this separation apartheid type stuff and don't get me wrong when I say I'm a separatist I don't mean I want to live in apartheid because that's a point that was brought up by the white interviewer like isn't that apartheid no I mean like Free us, give us our 40 acres and a mule, let us mind our own damn business and leave us the hell alone. That's not apartheid. That's like basically what country white folk do. They don't really be fucking around with a lot of other races quite often. They just have their land and then they mind their own business. That's a peaceful way to live. I don't, I barely have a problem with those types of people. It's only a problem when we try to integrate and then we realize, oh, we still hate each other because we have all this trauma from like 300 years of slavery. It was like, der, der, der. Of course we have trauma from 300 years of slavery and an emancipation proclamation, as bullshit as it was, is certainly not going to just erase the trauma and it's like, yay, now we can all live happily together. Woohoo, like, no, it doesn't work like that. And what I'm feeling from white people is quite honestly, it doesn't seem like all white people are on board or enough white people are on board to truly do the work to create an America or a space where integration can actually thrive without doing harm. Like, I haven't seen it before. I It's all like, you can ask, oh my God, you can ask almost anyone 
if you're in an integrated space, who actually feels completely comfortable? You ask the black people, do you feel 100% safe here? And I say, yeah, I, I feel pretty comfortable, but you know, I still cold switch. I'm still a little, yeah, whatever. It's like lukewarm. You ask white people, do you feel completely comfortable? They might feel, they might either feel like, oh my God, I love, I love the diversity. Or they might, you know, be like, um, I don't know, you know, but it's, there's actually no integrated space where everyone feels safe. That doesn't even exist. So my question is, what is the point? If, it, if we should have um, a compartmentalized society where sometimes there's in integration, sometimes there's separatism, which kind of we fell into that, like that's why churches are segregated. That's why black people will go to a black church, a black club, a black whatever, and be like, ah, no more white people, no more code switching, no more microaggressions. I'm just gonna be, be my black self in here and no one's gonna fuck with me um, in like a racially aggressive way. We already kind of naturally do that, but my question is, why can't that be embraced? Why can't that be, you know, why can't that be a narrative? Why, white liberals, do you feel the need to insert yourself in all of our political business trying to free ourselves when you clearly, as a collective, have not done the work to actually even make us feel safe in the same room with you, let alone trust you to hold hands side by side in our movement for liberation? As a activist and as a leftist who has experienced all kinds of racism and weird, insidious microaggressions buried under all kinds of narratives and rhetoric and strange things from the left and the right um, in terms of racial aggressions, my true belief is I do think white people can become real allies and accomplices for a revolution. But what I think it requires is a profound amount of work through generational trauma, through social trauma, through indoctrination, through dehumanization. In order for a white person to truly be an ally, not only do they need to radically re-educate themselves from what they've been taught in high school, but they also need to heal the person inside them who has witnessed this disgusting version of a society and all these atrocities and who has witnessed the dehumanization of not only of all kinds of people of color but also of themselves they need to do some serious deep spiritual work in order to be equipped to be a real ally they cannot simply read one book or see one social media post and then be told act 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 and then say oh i'm an activist now now i get it if someone's saying act Yes, go sign that petition. Yes, go to the protest. Yes, repost that post. Yes, ra uh, raise money for a fundraiser each way. Yes, do that. I don't really think that makes you an activist. I think that makes you a human being with empathy. But if you want to be an activist, an accomplice, and what you would call an ally, I don't even know why that word is used because it's so lukewarm. But if you want to be an accomplice to black liberation, you cannot just get radicalized overnight by one social media post or one book. You must be doing years and years of work. To be radicalized as a black person for the black liberation movement, you can't just see one social media post or read one book. As a black person, it took me years of decolonizing my mind, studying, reading, different perspectives, understanding, because the truth is, the answer isn't obvious. The truth isn't obvious. What actually happened in this country, the real history, the real solutions, the real problems, they are not obvious. They are buried, of course. The powers that be do not want us to understand what is happening. But because a lot of white liberals have grown up in privileged situations and they are still naive, you see they're not jaded about life. They're naive about life and they see the opportunity to have some moral virtue and they're like, oh my God, yes, I'm gonna go support this. Well, what happens is they think, well, I understand it all. Black people are oppressed this way and this is how you fix it. So yeah, rah, 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 black lives matter. They think it's so simple. They have completely dumbed down the equation of what's actually happening. They don't realize how insidious the government is. They don't realize how insidious the propaganda machine is. They don't realize how insidious and all pervasive systemic racism is. And they think it's as simple as following a few steps and, and, and memorizing a few, you know, 
I, I want to call them cheat codes, a few sayings, a few rules, and then this is how you do it, that's how you be an ally. It's like a list, this, 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 and this, and then there you go, you're an ally. They think it's that simple. They're naive because they haven't seen and experienced firsthand how insidious it is. And then when someone says, hmm, I don't feel like you're my ally, you're actually making me uncomfortable. Then they get triggered. They're like, what do you mean? I totally am. Right? And then they want to take leadership positions because then they start learning more and more and more about how disgusting white privilege is. And they're like, oh my God, I'm privileged. I'm disgusting. I have to fix it. I have to overdo it and fix it externally instead of internally. And then what do they do? Try to go lead protests. Try to go lead movements. Try to go educate people from their own incomplete canon of knowledge. They try to overcompensate for their guilt. Well, what I'm doing here is to call in every white person on whatever part of their journey they're on in terms of decolonizing their own minds and getting involved in revolution or allyship or whatever you want to call it. What I need you to know is before you can walk the walk and talk the talk, you need to feel some shit inside. You need to study from many, many sources that were never given to you in high school. You cannot just read one book. You cannot just follow one content creator. You need to study every black liberation person in the US and all over the world that you can find. You need to read from their perspective. You need to read hundreds of books. You need to watch hundreds of documentaries. You need to talk to thousands of black people that you can contact in this country or wherever you are or through social media or whatever. You need to immerse yourself in the history and the current canon of what is happening now before you can step up and try to lead anything and before you can confidently take action. Because a lot of narratives of what you should be doing as an ally are not pure, are not always coming from the right place. A lot of times a white person hears another white person tell them, you should do this, this is how you be an ally. And then a white person buys that, why? Because the person telling them preyed on their guilt. This, this, and this is so terrible. That's why you need to do this. Maybe that white person telling you what you should do is right. Maybe they're wrong. You should find out from the information of the actual people and the struggle you're advocating for if this white person actually has any legitimacy or if they're fooling you. And you should also be aware that Code Intel Pro still exists and that the CIA loves to hack whatever liberation movement they can get their hands on. So a lot of times, it, whether it's coming from a black person or a white person, you might think you're getting good information, but really it's tainted in some way, it's slanted in some way. Then they just pull on your heartstrings and they tell you something that gets you engaged or gets you clinged on or gets you feeling desperate to resolve something. And then you say, oh, I must do this. I must listen to this. If you're going to be an activist or an ally, you cannot be a sheep. You cannot play monkey, monkey see, monkey do. That is not how you do allyship. There's a lot of allies who are like, I'm just going to wait around for black people to tell me what to do, da da da, whatever. You should not just wait around for black people to tell you what to do. You should read hundreds and hundreds of books and watch hundreds of documentaries and talk to thousands of people. You should actually make up your own mind about what you really think about it and realize there's white people who are wrong about a lot of shit and there's black people who are wrong about a lot of shit because black people got brainwashed the most in this country. Do you feel what I'm saying? So I say all that to say, before you get so involved, and when I say involved, I mean trying to lead things in spaces, trying to be a safe space, trying to enter and participate in a safe space. Before you get involved in all that, I really want you to contemplate the question as a white person, why should you be here? Why should you be here in a black space? trying to participate in our revolution. As black people, we never got the chance to heal in peace. We never got the chance to reconcile and recoup what happened to us alone in peace. We never got the chance to write our own stories alone in peace. 
We got out of slavery and from the jump, we were just fighting even more, fighting the same oppression from the same oppressors, just cloaked in different systems. Now it's prison labor, now it's wage slavery, now it's, you know, uh, types of apartheid like getting less pay, getting less access to jobs and education, etc. Getting less access to loans and opportunities to own things. So we came right out of slavery, continuing to fight our oppressor. We did not have the chance to fucking heal in peace. So before you insert yourself into our movement, ask yourself, are you hindering our self-reflection, our peace, our space? Are you helping it? Because maybe, maybe your contribution isn't always as helpful as you think it is. And maybe some white people's roles could be to be very close to black people. I don't know, it feels weird to even say that. Maybe some white people's roles could be that. Maybe that's their destiny, I don't know. Maybe they can pull it off as a revolutionary. But maybe some white people's role is to reprogram other white people. Maybe as a white person, your role could be study everything. Get as much information as you want. Re-educate yourself. And then keep telling your friends, hey, you need to check this out. Do you understand this? You need to check this out. Maybe that's your role. And it's not saying some, you know, I don't want, almost want to call it thirst trappy activism. It's not some post this black square, we post this. It's not that, you know, you know, cheap, quick activism. It's a real, I read these hundred black authors and hey, white friend, you need to check this out. You should be aware of this concept. You should understand this. Another thing I would say about white allies, a lot of times I think you feel like, oh, I'm the good white person. I love black people. I'm not racist and I need to help them and protect them from all those bad guys and all those racists out there. And what I'm telling you is that is not true. If you are raised in America, whether you're black, white or whatever color, you have racism ingrained in you just from being here as a black person. I have to check my own mind because I have internalized racist ideas from being here. So you as a white person, no matter how pure your heart is or how much you feel like you love us, definitely are still racist. You are not the good guy. You are just becoming more self-conscious than other super racist people. So what I'm gonna need you to do is recognize that you still have internalized things that will come out as microaggressions and that you are not the epitome of a safe space. You you just aren't. It's It takes a lifetime of undoing that indoctrination and you're always gonna be imperfect. I'm always gonna be imperfect. Like that is the nature of living in this country. So with that being said, why do you have internalized racism? Here's why. You're a white person, right? You make twice the mean income of a black person. You are more likely to safely um, receive health care in this country. You're more likely to get a job and be paid more for that job. You have all of these privileges. Black people are still in a very fucked up position and you're on stolen land Stolen land, by the way, which 98% of other Americans own besides the original Americans whose land it was, 98%. You probably can't name one Native American tribe. Maybe you can name a few. You probably don't even know how many still exist. You might not have ever visited a reservation or gone to a powwow or done shit for them. So your position your very existence in America with all the, the privilege that you don't really think about that deeply. That you never really considered what would my hospital visit be like if I was black? Or how easy would it be for me to get a job or a home if I was black? Or what if I st would I have still gotten into the school if I was black? You don't really deeply think about every way that you're privileged. Your very position and your ignorance and your position taking space on this stolen land makes you racist. If you were really the most not racist white person to ever exist, you would fuck off back to the European country that you came from and not even try to do shit here unless you were invited. If you were really not racist, you would go back to your country and give your land back to who it actually came from. That's like what a truly not racist white person would be doing. 
But if you feel like you have some right to be here because, oh, well, I didn't do it. I'm not the one who colonized America. That was my ancestors' idea. Or that wasn't even my ancestors. My ancestors immigrated here because they were poor. Whatever your story is and your lack of taking responsibility for the space you take here, that is bullshit. That makes you racist. It doesn't matter how many protests you go to. It doesn't matter. So I can ask the same question from a different angle. If you're really not racist, white liberal, why do you think you should remain on Native American stolen land? Do you even have an answer? Do you even have an answer? Why? Why should you remain on Native American stolen land? Why, if you are so aware and you are so good hearted and you are so anti-racist, why don't you say, you know what? I'm gonna save up to immigrate back to Europe and I'm gonna give my land back to the tribe that it came from. What is, what is the blockage between that? I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just saying logically, I, do, I just don't understand. Like, what was your justification for not doing that? If you know everything that happened, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter if you didn't do it, you're still choosing to take space here. You don't have to be here. Like America isn't like, I think a lot of people think of America as like, oh yeah, it's just this melting pot and you know, it's everybody's place and da, 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 this hipstery type of shit. No, America is a settler, settler colonist, co I'm sorry, settler, coloni settler colonialism. That is America, Set it, settler colonialism. It used to be an entire diverse race of people's entire land. And then now it's mostly white people. Like wake up white liberals. America is like 70% white but it was originally 100% Native Americans. The only reason why you, white liberal, exist on this land, America, is because 130 plus million Native Americans were martyred to make space for you, whether or not you wanted that to happen or not. And then you still wake up and come up with a reason why you should stay here, and you call yourself an activist and a liberal. I don't really understand that. How does that make any sense? You take your privilege, you say, well, I didn't want to have this privilege because the system is messed up because you didn't vote for the Democrat. You're so like brain dead. It has nothing to do with the Democrat or Republican. You have your privilege and you don't give it away. You take your privilege financially. Maybe you donate a little sprinkle here, a little sprinkle there. You're not really doing shit about reparations. You're just giving out little sprinkles. You're not really being systematic about your reparations or how you're distributing privilege. You're not. Do you understand why Malcolm X was a separatist? Do you understand why it's hard for us to trust you? I don't want to trust you anymore. I don't want to. It seems like I'm being an idiot, really. So I hope you ask yourselves these questions. And if you're not white and you're watching this video, I hope this has maybe tickled your brain a little bit about, hmm, is that why I feel so weird about white people? Is that the ache I'm getting in this space? Because it took me a long time to admit all these things to myself and understand uh, under all the indoctrination and, and bullshit I've been taught. So I hope this video inspires somebody. I know the Ben Shapiro followers and whatever, those motherfuckers are gonna be in my comments like, ah, ah, save it for something else, please. This video is not for you. If you're one of those per people, you've reached the wrong side of the internet. Anyhow, I'll be posting more videos spontaneously as ideas come to me. Please let me know in the comments if you would like me to talk about something specific or give my perspective on something specific. Have a good one. Peace out.